Is money in a savings account considered a liquid asset? Well, a lot of you might just say casually, yes, but let's go into some detail. So I am your guide. I am a personal finance guru. I've been teaching personal finance and business startups for decades. So we're gonna talk about three things specifically as we talk about this topic. So number one, let's talk about what is the definition of a liquid asset. Some of you might never heard that term before. I know growing up as a farm girl in Nebraska, I didn't hear any of these terms, financial literacy or any of that. Number two, how do you even identify a savings account? Because if you've really read a lot of my work or been here on my channel, I make fun of savings accounts. So I'll get to that in a moment and what I really call them, not a savings account. like. Interesting. And then number three, the huge misconceptions of liquidity and what could that do for you if you do not understand liquidity and how to invest. I don't know how many people have tangled themselves up getting into really alternative assets like real estate, storage units, RV parks, land. Those are not liquid assets, meaning you can't just run back the next day or two months later and say, oh, by the way, I'd like out. Like it, your money's been invested completely into the asset class. So liquidity is very important, especially as you become wealthy and you start planning for different chapters of your life. So first of all, let's get a definition out here. What is liquid assets? I'm gonna actually read you the definition. So liquid asset, right? They are, and they matter in financial planning for a lot of people, especially as you get older and you would live on fixed incomes, which I think that whole thing is crazy, but you choose how you wanna do it. Liquid assets are assets that can be easily and quickly converted into cash without significant loss of value. These assets are readily available. They serve as a financial safety net for emergencies or investment opportunities. When you differentiate between, say, cash and other forms of liquidity, the stock market is pretty liquid, right? The crypto market, fairly liquid. So there are liquidity options that are out there. But again, like I said, if you get into real estate, alternative assets, cannabis projects, gas and oil projects, even owning your own company, you're spending the money. You're spending it on equipment. You're spending it on the project. You're spending it on the construction. It's spent. It's not liquid. You can't go back to it. CDs, extremely liquid, depending on how many months you put it in. And just even if it's a prepayment penalty, they're typically a little more liquid than anything else you're going to have. A savings account. Let's get to that. Why do I make fun of it? Because what is a savings account. If you think about that, just like a budget's like a diet, no one does that. That's a ridiculous word with money. Retirement's not even a financial word. It's an agricultural word. So as you dig deep into my work, I provide a little common sense to why do you have a savings account? So yes, the bank calls it a savings account, but what is it identified for? A rainy day, an emergency? I mean, come on, that's emotional money that you're going to spend however you want. So I redefine it and I call it a wealth account. So a wealth account is money that you're going to put away very specifically defined to go buy new assets. If you have an emergency account, call it an emergency account. If it's a college account, call it a college account. But start defining instead of this big lump of savings. It's just sort of ridiculous. And I've just seen too many people burn their savings on some emotional thing that they just want to go buy, whether that's a vehicle or they want to just take some random trip or they just want to buy something. It makes no sense. So that's up to you how you want to use savings account. Legally, that's what the banks call them. I would just encourage you to even have more of them. Nothing prohibits you from having three or four of those accounts. So they're going to be called savings accounts, but what are they identified for? Maybe you do have an emergency account, right? Whatever that number is. Maybe you have a college account, a wealth account. They could all be in that same category legally that the banks say, but there's nothing prohibits you from having some of them that define where your money is going. So you get a clear picture of what do you want when it comes to money. So is money in a savings account a liquid asset? Absolutely, right? And if you do it the way that I just suggested, so you'd have your checking account and a variety of savings accounts that are identified. And you could say savings one, emergency, savings two, college, whatever you want to use them for, but be very clear about the purposefulness of your money. Like I, I made fun of the word budget earlier. See, I don't use that word. I say forecast because you are going to spend money. So let's forecast very intelligently and strategically. What do you want to spend it on? And are you getting the best rate of return? on your money and how much of it do you really need liquid? See, during your high earning years, a lot of you, you can start putting your money into higher just return investments that are gonna give you more than a savings account's gonna give you. So then your money's making money, you're making money, and then later in life, look at what you need to do for some liquidity and having the money that you wanna have. Again, I call my favorite recession-proof assets is number one, iFlip. And if you have not got an app, I'm gonna give you a free app right now. Just go download the iFlip app in uh, the link below. and. It 
at life insurance. I mean, properly done, what I call infinite banking life insurance. And again, you can click on the link below, get an appointment with my partner, Jason, have a whole conversation with one of our agents. Life insurance can be borrowed against, it can provide cash value and huge death benefits for generational wealth. There's a lot to those recession proof assets that have some liquidity, not in the beginning, but later on. So before I talk about the common mistakes, and there are a lot of misconceptions and mistakes, I want you to subscribe to my channel. I'm here five days a week. Again, not because I just need to be here behind the camera. I want to teach you and your family financial literacy and business literacy. So while you're doing that, grab one more gift from me. I want you to get my two tickets to my millionaire intensive. We do it every three weeks. So if you can't come on the next one coming up, just sign up, start getting some of the information, get the Millionaire Maker book, start reading it and getting prepared. Because those of you that want to live corporate life, want to really understand how you do a business startup and actually make money in that day, you got to show up. I do a marketplace for about three hours, which allows you to sell your products and services to the hundreds of people who show up all the time to our events. So what are the misconceptions? That if you put all your money in a savings account, it's gonna be just the safest thing for you. Not really, it's not gonna make any yield or return. So what else could you be doing? I mean, CDs are a little step up from that. Again, I'd like to see you in some life insurance. We already gave you a link for that. I'd like to see you over at iFlip because you could start it for free for $50 and just start putting money into very defined accounts. A lump of savings is very risky because again, you're gonna emotionally define find what emergency you have versus what really do you need this money for and what are you intending it for? And a lot of you, if you're serious about becoming a millionaire, making and investing money is the pattern of millionaires. We make and we invest, we make and we invest. So yes, we're looking at some of that for liquidity, but we're always looking at increasing our income to provide more assets. Those of you who still are about the savings account and gotta have a little lump of money, you're probably making, spending, making, spending, and you need that just for your rainy day. Again, nothing that I would really believe in. I'm never gonna tell you to live within your means. I'm gonna tell you to grow your means. You can have anything you want. You can live where you want. You can live how you want, but you have to define it and make the money to have that. So for those of you who want to learn more about this, go to asklaurel.com, ask a question, make a request. If you can't ask a question, we can't start a conversation. And a lot of you don't be shy about asking whatever questions on your top of mind. I'm gonna correct it if it's a different financial question, it should be asked differently because a lot of you, your questions and the wrong questions are defining the wrong answers you're getting. And when you do that all over this bathroom wall called the internet, you're getting some really bad information. So make sure that you're really clear, like what is the outcome of your question that you're asking? And the better the question, the better the answer, the better the solution is for you. Last thing I wanna give you is a strategy session. Make sure you take advantage of our strategy team. We have one of the most world-class teams, their job is to help you identify where are your gaps and problems in your current financial life and how could we help be the solution for you. So again, see you over at Ask Laurel where they're 24 seven. Talk to you tomorrow.